We've been exploring the west coast of Ireland, and now we're heading for Dingle, which some people would say is the finest destination in the country. Dingle is a lush green peninsula extending out into the Atlantic Ocean. Entering the Dingle Peninsula and passing through villages of Blennerville, Camp, and Anaskol, we stop by the roadside for a lovely view looking down towards the coast and across the green fields. Next stop, Dingle, our home base for the next couple days. The town is one of Ireland's best, with excellent hotels, of course many pubs, and in recent years, Dingle has become one of the gourmet capitals of the country with many fine restaurants. We'll be taking you inside a couple of them. The drive-in gave us a nice overview and we'll be taking you on several walks through town. Arriving at our Hotel Benners, it's on the main street of Dingle, very convenient location. Most of the rooms are in the back away from the street, making a very quiet, relaxing spot to stay. We'll show you a little more of the hotel later in the program, but first we're eager to get out and take a walk around. We just step right outside the front door of the hotel and we are on Main Street, Dingle. It's got a lot of pubs, restaurants, a few art galleries and shops, and yet it still retains a local feeling because it's a couple of blocks away from the touristic center. Dingle's rather small, as we'll show you on the map. It's just got three principal streets, Main, Green, and Strand, with the center of action clustered in a few small blocks by the waterfront. You can see the town center is small enough that you don't need to worry about looking at a map or reading a guidebook to find out where to go. It's all right there in front of you. One place after another, the shops, pubs, and restaurants, making it easy to see all of the center in a couple of hours. Of course, you'll want to spend time eating and drinking and shopping. Because Dingle is out on this peninsula, a little bit hard to get to, and yet it's one of the nicest places in Ireland. It's got the urban charm of a town. Most visitors find the real attraction is the surrounding areas with the beautiful countryside and the historic sites. With a few minutes drive, you're at the edge of town and beyond that, you're in the countryside almost immediately. So we hop in our van and do a tour of the peninsula. It's not unusual to run into some rain when you're out here in the far tip of Europe in the Atlantic Ocean. And we had some rain this morning, but it cleared up a little bit during the day. Dingle is a peninsula sticking into the sea at the western edge of Europe, set amid wild green scenery surrounded by the ocean. One of the main historic sites you'll see is Dunbeg Fort. It's quite typical of the Celtic fortresses of the Iron Age in Ireland. It's built right up against the edge of a cliff, so it's easy to defend itself with the big walls on one side and the sea cliff on the other. And what was the purpose? What was it for? Well, th this was an early settlement. It's very early. It is 500 BC. This is what they built. They're under attack. They're defending and attacking. Probably housed up to maybe 20 people you know, four or five families with one head guy. And uh -huh. when they come under attack, they're all in here, they will bring animals in here, everything. Uh -huh. And there would have been timber structures in here. And under attack, they would bring animals in here, keep everything safe. Because when they raid, they'll carry everything. The stones, they're kept flat enough for walking. It's called dry stone walling. <laughs> That's what it is. And it's still carried out today. People can build walls. That'll last another couple of hundred years. Uh. Curious stone structures. The beehive huts. These stone domes were first built about 3,000 years ago, it's believed, and they were probably the homes of ordinary people, of the farmers who lived in the area. Several generations living together under one roof. Okay, we got a series of one, two, three beehive huts. Uh -huh. Early settlements. The stone domes are built up in what's called the Corbel style, in which each layer of stones as you go higher is grouped more towards the center of the structure until finally meeting at the top, forming a very solid stone dome, even without the use of mortar, all held together by gravity and friction. They're called beehive huts because of the shape, not because there was any bees inside. These were for people. 
It's believed this site was occupied until about 1200 AD, by which time it had evolved into a farmstead for an extended family with the habitation sites and with the corrals and room for livestock, farm buildings, and storage places. This style of prehistoric stone dome dwelling is not unique to Ireland. It's found in the south of Italy and other places throughout Europe dating back to the Iron Age thousands of years ago. It's estimated there are the remains of about 400 beehive huts scattered throughout the Dingle Peninsula. This seems to be the most intact and accessible combination of huts right on the side of the road, so it's a great place to stop and learn about them. One of the legends says that they were the huts of the monks. There were certainly a lot of monks and early Irish Catholics living in the area, but there's no definite proof that these were occupied by monks. They were built about a thousand BC, well before the Christian era, before the time of monks. Now, so it's letting in a bit of water at the moment now, but these would have been watertight and absolutely airtight. Great place to hang out. This is the original one. This one has stood the test of time. We're lucky today that some of Ireland's prehistory is still quite visible with stone structures that have survived for thousands of years. It's believed that people have been living on the Dingle Peninsula for at least 6,000 years, living a settled life as farmers and fishermen in a Neolithic culture. Archaeologists have counted nearly 5,000 stone structures and ruins and remains on the Dingle Peninsula. It is the highest density of Irish prehistoric structures in the entire country. The other most amazing of the ancient structures on Dingle Peninsula is the Galerus Oratory. It's an ancient stone church made with no mortar at all. The stones are just piled one on top of the other for a very snug fit. It's one of the oldest and most famous churches in the whole of Ireland, and yet mysterious. Nobody knows quite exactly how old it is. Estimates bring it back to the 9th century, 10th century, not quite sure. The church is in almost perfect condition, showing how incredibly well it was constructed in the first place. The building technique, again, was the corbelling system, where one row of stones overlaps the row underneath, with the building getting more narrow as it grows higher. The structure is waterproof and airtight, forming a sheltered space for intimate religious activities. Presumably, they came on Sundays and holy days to conduct mass. It was obviously for a small congregation. There wouldn't have been a very large population back in those days because of famine, disease, plague, infant mortality, warfare, short lifespan. Living conditions were difficult, and yet the Masons were able to come together and build this structure of everlasting beauty. These people had a subsistence economy that just provided the basic needs from what they could grow and catch and fish. A small amount of trading would have taken place, but largely they were self-sufficient. Back in the Middle Ages, when Galerus was built, fully utilizing all their resources, they used the mountains for gathering and the, the more rough patches for animal grazing and the arable land for farming for their main staples of oats, barley, and wheat. If you drove from Dingle out around the peninsula and back again, it's just about 25 miles, so you can easily do it in half a day while stopping to look at the sights and then head back into town. Dingle is the westernmost point in Ireland, and so the locals like to claim that it's the westernmost point in Europe. Next stop is New York. Dingle certainly is rather remote. One could say unspoiled, a more natural setting than mm, the hustle bustle of many European locations. It's not on the tourist route as much as more famous places like Killarney and Galway and Dublin and Cork. And therefore, it's a more quiet place. It's a little bit more peaceful. And yet, Main Street is lined with pubs, as you see, and there are lots of shops to keep you busy. Woolen garments are one of the favorite items that people love to shop for here. 
get that Irish fisherman's sweater or a traditional scarf. Along with tourism, fishing is another major activity in Dingle and surrounding waters which are very productive for large-scale fishing. No surprise that restaurants here specialize in fresh fish. And one of the more popular places is Out of the Blue that's usually packed with locals and so tourists queue up to get in. So make your reservations ahead of time. They are ranked number one on TripAdvisor, but they don't serve any meat, only seafood and vegetables, of course. The menu changes every day depending on what's available from the fishing boats that dock right across the street. If you're down at the harbor pier in the morning, you might see some of the big fishing boats come in. These are large-scale factory boats, generally from other European countries, and they use Dingle as a principal harbor. Fishing has always been a major economic activity in Ireland. Maps from the early 14th century already show some important fishing grounds. Irish fisheries were famous and productive for centuries, but by the middle of the 20th century, it had begun to collapse. The recovery in recent decades has made the waters off the Irish coast and the North Atlantic among the most productive in the world. The fish are brought ashore packed in ice containers that are destined for the continent. They're heading for France and Spain, not so much for consumption in Ireland. Although some of the fish do find their way to the local restaurants and fish markets. And what is that? Zandori. Zandori. Yeah. Okay. And they're all the same? It's a skate, a haddock. It goes to the French, other fish go to the Spain. Spain? Yes. The skate, the haddock, the John Dory, is go to the French. And the other fish, mom fish, I go to the Spain. Spain? Okay. Yeah. Fish consumption in Spain is six times greater than that of Ireland per capita. Big demand. The local commercial dingle fishing fleet just consists of a handful of boats anymore. And recreational fishing is a popular item with tourists while the seagulls wait for their meal. We had a chance to eat in another one of the better restaurants of Dingle, Global Village, owned by Nola Cassidy and Martin Bielan, right on the main street. They've been there for 16 years and developed quite a reputation. Hello, Martin here at Global Village Restaurant. Well, we had a chance to talk with <laughs> Martin, the owner-chef, while he was hard at work in the kitchen preparing his foods. But he took some time to describe his dishes and tell us about what's happening in the Dingle restaurant scene. Dingle is the place to eat in Ireland. It's yeah. the one. And the reason is we've got the ocean right beside us. We've mm -hmm. got the hills all around us, organic farms, organic vegetables, great chefs and a good tourist space to keep the whole thing ticking over. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to mention the scenery, the culture, the music, all the things that were here already in place and tourism coming. Mm -hmm. Now we've just added food into the mix. Great quality craft beers and drinks happening in the pubs. Dingle's been a tourist destination for 30 years, but yeah. it's been a food destination maybe for over, probably only five or six now, really. Maybe 2008, yeah. you know, because as the tourism yeah. comes in, it starts to support more restaurants. Yeah, it snowballs. Uh, you know, and it starts to snowball because chefs are, attracted to where they're going to make a living and no point setting up in a town in the middle of nowhere that no one's going to buy your food. Right, right. And it's so good to have competition. Competition brings excellence. It's all about competition. Uh -huh. and, and brings uh, more customers. Brings more customers. Everybody works together in the whole thing. Uh -huh. It's become about the food. Mm -hmm. You know, not yeah. only about the food, but it's very much that's factored into the decision to travel, you know. Sure. People just say, hey, well, you know, that's a great spot, but they get no restaurants. So if they, if they look at it and go, hey, that's a good spot, and you know you can really eat well there, well, that, yeah. that starts to make a whole different... It can be the decider. It can point. be the decider, can't it, you know? And you get the fish from the dock? Yeah, we get fish straight off the boats. Mm -hmm. Straight off the boats, it's great. Beautiful fresh fish. Meat from the Kerry Hills, and we grow all our own vegetables organically. In oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. So this is from our garden. Uh, we have a the organic garden back in Ventry. Uh huh. Uh, now we have a uh, selection of the, of the vegetables that are coming in at the moment. That's some carrot puree, some red cabbage, some pea puree, some, some pak choy, some baby fennel, some spinach, some asparagus, some white turnips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, healthy and wholesome and organic. That's a black sole. 
Also known as a Dover sole in certain areas. In, in England, it's called a Dover sole. It's a beautiful fish. On the only best served on the bone. Hake and a nettle risotto. Locally made chorizo on top. Here we have some ray wing. Ray wing, so it's uh, also known as a skate or a ray wing. Really quite different, quite juicy, juicy fish. It's organic wild boar from Ballywillan Farm. A pancetta made from the wild boar. A little polenta cake, crisp polenta cake, and some pea puree. Oh, the green salad. And the salad. And the salad, yeah. They're open for dinner every day except Tuesday from 5.30 p.m. It's easy to walk here from the waterfront, for example. It's just 500 meters away. Dingle is rather compact. And our hotel is practically across the street, the Benners. Great place to rest up and get up in the morning and have a delicious Irish breakfast. Getting ready for another big day, we're leaving town and heading south. Before we go, let's have another quick look at Dingle and review our trip with a slideshow. Just walking through town and admiring the many different shop fronts is one of the most fun things you can do while you're visiting. Be sure to look at our Ireland series for the complete picture that opens the door to this magical country.